Hey guys, it's Caroline here from Juniper Links Accounting and today we're going to look at accounting for UK digital nomads. So whether you're already traveling the world with your business or whether you're looking to actually start out as a digital nomad and want to know more about like how you should set up your company, whether it should be as a self-employed person or whether you should actually create a limited company and what the tax differences are between the two also what kind of expenses you can claim so i'm going to go through a lot of information that can help you possibly save quite a bit of money so without further delay let's get started with the video all right so today we're going to look at accounting for uk digital nomads so let's start with something really simple first of all and that's how do you calculate profit so I'm sure many of you are already familiar with the concept of profit but basically you would take your sales or whatever you're doing, like services, so you take the sales value and that's technically your turnover. Then you would take away your cost of sales. So these are like direct costs attributable to those sales, such as computer software that you provide to your clients in order for them to use that. Um, a very common example of sales is if you are a plumber, let's say, and you needed the materials to actually perform your services, like for example, pipes and screws and bolts and so on, then those would be direct costs of the sale. And those are like material costs. So those are costs of sale. And I mean, it's in the name. So <laughs> anything that's kind of used up in you providing a service or even making a sale, those are costs of sales. The next one is you take away allowable business expenses. So this is something like accountancy fees, software that you use for your company in order to provide your service, uh, web hosting. I'll go into a whole list of these in a little bit in this video, so don't worry about that. I will cover some of these for you. And finally, we've got the operating profit figure. Now this figure here is actually the amount that's gonna be taxed in a different way, depending on how your business is set up. So for a limited company, this is going to be corporation tax. And as a self-employed person or sole trader, we call them, you're gonna pay personal tax and national insurance because all profit from sole trader or self-employed income is basically personal income, all of it. Like you can't pick and choose. So <laughs> that's gonna be taxed and charged with national insurance at the appropriate rates. And that's like the simplified, most basic way to calculate profit. So let's go through some differences of self-employed and a limited company when you're a digital nomad and just starting out or you've been one for a bit and you're not sure what structure you should use for your income. So as a self-employed person or sole trader, you are essentially the company. So there's basically nothing distinguishing you from a business. You are the business <laughs> and all profit is taxed as personal income like we saw before. So this here can later become a downside when you're comparing it to a limited company. And I'll get into that in a minute. So if something does go wrong, let's say a client wasn't happy with your work or, and obviously you can get business insurance for this kind of stuff, but basically if something goes wrong, you could be found personally liable. Now with a limited company, you have a separate legal entity with its own money. So it's got its own business bank account. And I know you can have your own business bank account for self-employed setup, but in this case, that money in your company is your company's money. So when you actually take the money out as income, it means you're physically taking the company's money to yourself and you need to be taxed on that money in a different way. So. The company's profit is taxed with corporation tax instead of like personal income, national insurance, as with sole trader. So then you would take money out from this after tax figure and that money will be charged with personal tax and of course national insurance, depending on how much you take. And you can pay yourself a few different ways from a limited company to make it more tax efficient for you because you do own the business. So you should also have some rewards for actually taking on this extra responsibility and running your own business, right? So we'll get into that in a second here as well. So basically why it's called a limited company is because it's got a limited liability. So your biggest loss personally would be the initial share that you use to set up the business. So normally you would just start out with a one pound share. And that's basically what you bought the company for. 
obviously it was set up with the, <laughs> with the share, you didn't buy it, but that's what it means. And if the company was to go bust, let's say, and everything got wrecked and it just all went downhill and you had to close it down, then the biggest loss to you personally would be this one pound share. Obviously, you've lost your entire business, which is a whole different issue. <laughs> Obviously, you rely on that for income, but you don't have to, for example, pay out of pocket for issues with your business. Now, I've starred this here because there is one case where, well, there's a few cases, but as a director, if you're found to have committed or allowed negligence to happen in your business. For example, you took too many dividends from the business where it wasn't able to pay its corporation tax bill, then HMRC could see that as negligence as your responsibility as the director was to not let that happen and you did. So they could come after you personally in that circumstance. Best practice is to always ensure there's enough money to pay taxes at any given time. So you never take any of that as income while the company cannot afford to pay you. So this creates loans and it's technically called an illegal dividend, but you don't need to worry about that for now. Just pretty much if you were to mess it up on purpose, let's say you took too much money and they couldn't pay tax, HMRC could come after you personally. Okay, so here's a tax comparison with two setups. So we've got a limited company here, sorry, we've got self-employed here and we've got a limited company over here. Sorry, it's a bit messier because obviously the limited company has a lot more going on. <laughs> so with self-employed, we've got £50,000 of turnover and with the company, we've also got the same level of turnover. So this is your initial fees or sales that you made during the year. And then we take away your cost of sales here and here. So you can see all the figures are exactly the same so far. <laughs> then we've got your expenses. This is going to be things like web hosting, travel costs, uh, equipment, all that kind of good stuff. And we've got the same amount here. So now what we've got left over on the self-employed side is £34,000 in profit. And this would be the case with the limited company, but what we can do with the limited company is actually pay yourself a salary, which can be going against your corporation tax liability for the year as a legitimate business expense. Now, as self-employed, you can't do that because all of your company income is basically your income, so it literally is impossible to pay yourself a salary. If you hired employees, you can pay them a salary, of course, but since you are the business, there's no way you can like pay yourself money in a different way other than profit. And we've also got other things that you can benefit from as a limited company, such as the use of home allowance. Now, this is basically a four pounds a week allowance that HMRC gives directors that are employees to basically go towards the cost of any time you spend working from home on business activities. And you don't need to like have receipts or evidence of this claim. And this is technically extra money you can take out tax-free because it's simply a reimbursement of an out-of-pocket cost that you have incurred. So now with the limited company, you can see we've got a lower profit figure here compared to the self-employed side. On the self-employed side, this whole profit here is simply personal income. So we have the tax figure here and we've got the national insurance figure here. And this is all based on current allowances. So that's the 2019, 2020 tax year. This is what your tax and national insurance would look like as a self-employed person on 34,000 pounds worth of profit. So your take home pay is here. So this is what you get after everything's been accounted for. Okay, so back to the limited company side where things get a bit interesting. So you've got your profit figure, which we've deducted all the expenses from. And now what we have to do is charge corporation tax instead. So this is 19% and that's the current rate. So the leftover amount after we deduct that corporation tax is at £20,374 which is technically called the available profit in the business or the distributable reserves in the company. So this is all profit after tax, it's just cash. If we were to take this entire dividend 
This is all on the basis that you have your full allowances during the year, you don't have any other income. So everything's just done like if this was your only income for the year on both the self-employed side and the limited company side. So you'd be looking at a dividend tax bill of about £1,000, which is deducted from the obvious dividends here. So that's your dividend income. And then remember how we had the salary up here. And you might be like, oh, why are you deducting my salary? That's a bit weird. It should be added to it, right? Well, not quite, because the salary is an expense to the business. So it gets corporation tax relief, just like any other expense. And it needs to reduce the profit figure here in order to get that tax relief. So now we need to add the salary back in to your income because it's in addition to this dividend. And once we add that to the net dividend amount, we can get your total take home pay figure. On this small amount of salary, there's basically no tax because it's under the personal allowance for the year. And same with national insurance, it's under the threshold. So now we've got our take home pay figures on both sides and you can see they're not hugely different. Now, I could be a bit cheeky and add the use of home allowance into this take home pay figure, which is actually quite accurate because you don't get that income on the self-employed side. So technically it is this take home pay figure plus the use of home allowance as the actual take home pay figure. Let's just put it that way. But the reason why self-employed and limited company is not that different when you're talking about small numbers like this is because you can still claim pretty much very similar expenses from both sides. And the reason why, even though you can claim this large salary as an expense on the limited company side is because you got this 19% corporation tax as well. So personal tax is 20% on anything over the personal allowance, which is 12 and a half thousand pounds for the 1920 tax here. So that much tax free money on a small amount of profit obviously makes quite a big dent in the actual percentage of tax out of the gross value. So because you can claim all of your expenses just the same with both sides, pretty much, obviously there's some in here. Like for example, you could have a Christmas party allowance of 150 pounds. <laughs> so you could technically add that in as an extra expense you can take out. And because you can claim the similar expenses, because they've added a small amount of dividend tax as well, before it used to be tax free in the lower rate. So these things kind of made it pretty similar uh, with the limited company being slightly better at lower levels of profit. <laughs> <laughs>